On behalf of General Daniel D. Allen, the Commanding General of the United States Army Forces Command, welcome to our change of command ceremony. Today, Major General James C. McConville, relinquished command of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, to Major General Gary J. Valesky. At this time, we'd like to extend a sincere welcome to our distinguished guest, the Honorable Alberto Gonzalez, former United States Attorney General. General Daniel B. Allen, Commanding General, United States Army Forces Command. The Honorable David Jackson, Mayor of Madisonville, Kentucky. Lieutenant General Mark Curran, United States Army, retired. The Honorable Mark Green, State Senator from the 22nd District of Tennessee. The Honorable Joe Pitts, State Representative from the 67th District of Tennessee. The Honorable Marty Lundthorn, State Representative from the 78th District of Tennessee. Mr. Kim Ben Kimbrough. Senior Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army for Tennessee and 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell and Mrs. Kimbrough. Mr. Chuck Henderson, Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army for Kentucky West and 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell and Mrs. Henderson. Mr. Bill Harpell, Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army for Tennessee East and 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell. Mrs. T.C. Freeman, Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army for Kentucky Central and 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell. And Colonel Bob Freeman, United States Army retired and 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell. The Honorable Steve Cribble, Christian County General Judge Executive. The Honorable Kim Goble, Montgomery County General Sessions and Juvenile Court Judge. The Honorable Chappelle Wilson, former District Court Judge and Mrs. Wilson. Major General Edward W. Taniki, Adjutant General, Kentucky National Guard. Major General K.K. Chen, Senior Commander, Fort Bragg, South Carolina. Major General James M. Richardson, Commanding General, United States Army Aviation and Missile Command, Redstone Arsenal, Alabama. Command Sergeant Major Jamie Johnson, United States Army Southern Regional Medical Command, Command Sergeant Major. Ms. Maria McConville, spouse of Major General James C. McConville, Commanding General, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault in Fort Campbell. Ms. Lee Ann Velasky, spouse of Major General Gary J. Velasky, incoming Commanding General, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault in Fort Campbell. Ms. Sandra Smith, spouse of Command Sergeant Major Alonso J. Smith, Division Command Sergeant Major, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault in Fort Campbell. Major General Lindsey Freeman, United States Army retired, and Mrs. Freeman. Major General Virgil Packett, United States Army retired, and Mrs. Packett. Mr. Tommy Vallejos, Montgomery County Commissioner. Mr. Ron Sokol, Montgomery County Commissioner, and Mrs. Sokol. Ms. Stacy Oliver, National Security Policy Advisor, United States Senator Bob Croker. Ms. Aaron Reed, Senior Policy Advisor for National Security, United States Senator Lamar Alexander. Brigadier General Marky Anderson. As Assistant Adjutant General, Wisconsin Army National Guard. Brigadier General John M. Miller, Assistant Adjutant General, Illinois Army National Guard. Brigadier General Mark R. Stammer, Deputy Commanding General, 101st Airborne Division of Air Assault, and Mrs. Stammer. Brigadier General Kenneth A. Kilmer, Adjutant General, Arkansas Army National Guard, and Mrs. Kilmer. Brigadier General Bill Gaylor, Director, Officer of Personal Management Division, Human Resources Command, and Mrs. Gaylor. Brigadier General Howard W. Yellen, United States Army Retired, and Mrs. Yellen. Brigadier General Brian C. Copes, Director of Joint Staff, Indiana Army National Guard. Councilman James R. Lewis, Ward 3, Clarksville, Tennessee. Councilman Janelle Brooks, Ward 7, Clarksville, Tennessee. Mr. Phil Harpell, 2010, Champion of Fort Campbell. Ms. Sam Bass, Spouse of Sam Bass, 2011, Champion of Fort Campbell. Ms. Lori Harper, 2011, Champion of Fort Campbell. And Mr. Harper. Ms. Shirley West, 2011, Champion of Fort Campbell. And Command Sergeant Major West, United States Army Retired. Ms. Valerie Hunter Kelly, 2014, Champion of Fort Campbell, and Colonel Mark Kelly, United States Army, retired. Mrs. Kimberly Caveney, spouse of Colonel Valerie C. Caveney, Jr., Chief of Staff, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. Mr. Don Jenkins, Medal of Honor recipient. We'd also like to thank all Gold Star family members in attendance at today's ceremony. Thank you for your continued support. Ladies and gentlemen, please give your attention to Staff Sergeant Randy Clark of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault Parachute Demonstration Team. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Major General James C. McConville and Command Sergeant Major Alonzo J. Smith, I'm Staff Sergeant Clark, and I would like to take this opportunity to tell you what a pleasure it is to perform for you here today. Today, I will narrate for you a precision free fall as performed by members of your 101st Airborne Division's Parachute Demonstration Team. Parachuting, while never losing its fundamental drama, is much more than simply jumping from an aircraft, pulling a ripcord, and hoping for the best. From its earliest days, while it was reserved for desperate pilots, daring stuntmen, and rugged paratroopers, parachuting has evolved 
through leading edge aviation technology to become the sport of the modern age. The American paratrooper, born of fire in the skies of World War II more than half a century ago, has since struck fear and terror in the hearts of those foolish enough to oppose them. Relentless in their skill and courage, not only there, but also on the ground, these brave soldiers have forged themselves a place of honor in America's heart. The Screaming Eagles originated back in 1958 during the infancy of precision freefall and is the Army's oldest parachute team. Early team members were soldiers who volunteered their free time in order to perform quality parachute demonstrations. After many years of success, the Army decided to form a full-time parachute team known as the Golden Knights. In 1984, the 101st Command Group opted to form their very own full-time team, and we are known as the Screaming Eagles. If you will direct your attention to the aircraft high above, you will see it as it turns onto its jump run. At this time, the jump master's head is outside the aircraft in the wind and the cold as he aligns it to the precise exit point. Due to the extreme amount of wind and engine noise, the jump master must use hand and arm signals in order to communicate with the pilot and fellow jumpers. If you watch closely, you may even notice the nose of the aircraft moving slightly to the left or to the right as the jump master makes final corrections. If you continue to follow the aircraft, you should be able to see the jumpers for today's second pass as they exit. Watch closely. The jumpers will signal each other to turn 180 degrees and track away from each other, creating a safe separation before deploying their parachute. Watch closely for the sim simultaneous opening of their main canopies. The jumpers are now placed in their canopies through a series of controllability checks. These left and right hand turns allow the jumpers to ensure that their canopies are functioning properly. In the unfortunate event that a jumper should encounter a malfunctioning parachute, he has the ability to safely release his main and deploy his reserve or backup. The parachutes that are used by the Screaming Eagles are high performance Ram Air canopies made of a lightweight ripstop nylon. These parachutes are highly maneuverable and have a forward speed of approximately 20 miles per hour. In the jumper's hands are steering toggles that are attached to the rear of their canopies. To turn left, the jumper will simply pull on the left toggle, and to turn right, they'll pull on the right toggle. During any free fall demonstration, there are many key requirements that must be met. None of this would be possible without constant ground air communication and gra ground readings. Performing the difficult task of ground control with 3rd Brigade Staff Sergeant Jared Coon and Sergeant Alex McConaughey, being led by the Team Chief Sergeant First Class Brian Aggie. Our air support comes to us today from 5th Battalion of the 101st Combat Aviation Brigade. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause for the ground and the air crew. As you can see, the jumpers set up their traffic patterns much like that of an aircraft at an airport. This consists of a crosswind, downwind, the base leg, and their final approach. Landing on the target takes a great deal of concentration. The jumpers must remain constantly aware of wind speed and direction. In most cases, a wind streamer will be placed in the target area. But today, our jumpers have the distinct honor of using unit guidons represented proudly by the units of the 101st Airborne Division as wind indicators. Our first jumper landed today, the military policeman from 716th MP Battalion with over 550 parachute free fall jumps. Let's give a round of applause for Sergeant John Dick. Our second jumper, also with over 550 parachute free fall jumps, combat infantryman, second brigade combat team. Let's give a round of applause for Staff Sergeant Edward Sears. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Screaming Eagle, thank you for continued support. Air assault and blue sky. On behalf of the officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers of the 101st Airborne Division at Air assault, thanking him for his dedication as the division commander. A 101st Airborne Division Air Assault flag is also being presented by Staff Sergeant Edward Sears to Major General Gary J. Valeski from the officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault, welcoming him as a new division commander.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation delivered by Chaplain David Bolas, the division chaplain. Would you please pray with me? Almighty God, on this historic moment in Screaming Eagle history, I ask your blessing on the ceremony today. We thank you for the leadership and legacy of Major General McConville. Would you bless him and his family as they continue to serve our nation in positions of great responsibility. Grant our incoming commanding general, Major General Valesky, wisdom and strength to lead this great division into its next rendezvous with destiny. Thank you for the great Screaming Eagle soldiers represented here and abroad. Bless them and strengthen their hands as they serve faithfully as your agents of justice against the enemies of our nation. May your presence bless the ceremony today. In your great name I pray, amen. In a moment, the band will sound adjutant's call, which indicates that the adjutant is about to form the division. History commanders have used patriotic songs and sterling marches to race them around as free to court their soldiers before battle. This tradition is symbolized in today's ceremony. The action begins the ceremony by directing the band to sound off. The band will parade in front of the soldiers to prepare them for their future battles. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the pride of the Screaming Eagle, the Warner Bros. Air Mission Air Assault Screaming Eagle Band as they sound off. Chief of Staff for the 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault.
Prof. Sound of horror. Major General James C. McConville, the commanding general of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault and Fort Campbell, and the incoming commander, Major General Garrett J. Valesky. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to General Allen. General Allen has deferred honors to Major General McConville. Sound, present, arms. At this time, General Allen, Major General McConville, and Major General Velocity will inspect the command. The 101st Airborne Division was activated on 15 August 1942 at Camp Playboy, Louisiana. The first commanding general, Senior General William C. Lee, noted that the missing activations and inactivations at Camp Brandon Ridge, Kentucky, and Fort Jackson, South Carolina. A group of reactivations were in the
sound attacher. Sound officers and colors, center march.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Detachment order. Four. Sound order arms and parade rest. At this time, Major General McConnell is being presented with a branch shell casing for the firing of honors by First Sergeant Daniel McKeon from Alpha Battery, 3rd Battalion, 320th Military Regiment, 3rd Brigade Combat Team. Major General McConnell's wife, Ms. Maria McConnell, is being presented with a bouquet of red roses on behalf of the officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault in Fort Campbell by Sergeant First Class Carmen Cook, the Division Honor Guard NCOIC. Jessica is being presented with a half dozen red roses, while their son Michael, a lieutenant in the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, is presented with a 101st Airborne Division patch in hopes that someday he may serve in the 101st Airborne Division at Aerosol. <laughs> Major General McConville's father, Mr. Joseph McConville, who served as enlisted sailor in the Navy during the Korean War, is being presented with a 101st Airborne Division Aerosol hat along with Major General McConnell's brothers, John and Paul. At this time, Major General Velasquez's wife, Miss Lee Ann Velasky, is being presented with a bouquet of yellow roses on behalf of the officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers of the 101st Air One Division Air Assault in Fort Campbell by Sergeant Charles Cole for the Division Honor Guard. At this time, their son Alex is being presented with a Winter First Airborne Division Air Assault hat. <laughs> Flowers are being presented to Major General Velasquez's mother-in-law, Ms. Joanne Sleeman, his sister, Ms. Raina Groenczewski, and Ms. Irma. One of first Airborne Division Air Assault hats are being presented to Major General Velasquez's father-in-law, Mr. Dale Schleeman, his brother, Mr. Greg Schlowski, and his uncle, Mr. Red Armstrong.
Ladies and gentlemen, General Daniel B. Allen, the Commanding General of the United States Army Forces Command. Welcome friends and family, and it's a blessing to have uh, the members of the McConville family here, minus uh, their son at uh, LDAC at Fort Knox, uh, Kentucky. How about a round of applause for that great McConville family that uh, has been here today. And a mighty welcome to the Valesky family. Great to be back with you again today. And uh, welcome to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. A round of applause, please. <laughs> so thanks for uh, joining us. Your attendance has made a special day all the more memorable for these great commanders that you see standing before you. With great humility, I want to recognize the sacrifices and strength of our Gold Star families in attendance and those serving around the nation. Mere words cannot express our deepest appreciation, so please understand that it is with the fullest of hearts when we simply say thank you. Distinguished guests, <laughs> distinguished guests, fellow general officers, command sergeants major, national and community leaders, commanders, soldiers, and friends of Fort Campbell, thank you for joining us this morning for the 101st Airborne Division Change of Command Ceremony as we transition command responsibility for this historic installation and renowned division, Air Assault. A Change of Command Ceremony is as much about recognizing great soldiers, civilians, and Army families as it is about the outgoing and incoming commanders and today is certainly no exception. I want to begin by offering my welcome on behalf of all members of Forces Command to each and every member of the 101st Airborne Division in the Fort Campbell community. The men and women of the Screaming Eagles are well represented this morning by those on parade to your front. The Salute Battery, Color Bearers and Guards, Commanders, Staffs, and Soldiers. You look magnificent. And once again, you represent the soldiers, civilians, and families of our Army with stalwart distinction. I want to offer a special accolade to the 101st Airborne Division Band, the Pride of the Eagle, and to the Fort Campbell Parachute Demonstration Team. You serve as tremendous ambassadors for the Division and for the Fort Campbell community, as well as our Army, each and every day. Please join me in a round of applause for all of these outstanding work. To our heroic troopers on the field representing more than 34,000 warriors on Fort Campbell, you truly look magnificent and it's humbling to be in your presence. From the origins of this division's proud combat heritage, beginning over 70 years ago in World War II in Operation Overlord in Normandy, to the mountains of Afghanistan, members of this mighty division steadfastly and courageously answer our nation's call at every rendezvous with destiny. And the Screaming Eagles deliver with a resounding legacy of success time and time again. At this very moment, the strike soldiers of 2nd Brigade Combat Team and the Thunder Warriors of the 159th Combat Aviation Brigade are deployed once again in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. We keep these courageous soldiers and their families in our thoughts and prayers and we thank you all for all that you do each and every day in service to our nation. We are here today to congratulate and recognize the extraordinary service and achievement of an outstanding commander and command team for a job well done. And to recognize another great leader as he takes the colors of this distinguished division. For General Jim McConville and his wife Maria, this day not only marks a new beginning, it also symbolizes the conclusion of another tremendous chapter in this division's storied history. Jim has led this renowned formation with distinction for nearly three years, marked by consistent demands on and off the battlefield that exemplified the agility and responsiveness of this great division. Prepared and enabled by Team Campbell, General McConville led the Screaming Eagles on multiple short notice missions. And every time, this division delivered on time, on target, and with exemplary mission success. Major General McConville and his team prepared the division for critical national missions. And you have excelled. 
As President Harry S. Truman once remarked, progress occurs when courageous, skillful leaders seize the opportunity to change things for the better, end of quote. Jim, you and the Screaming Eagles have exemplified President Truman's words through your stalwart st service to the division, to Fort Campbell, and to our nation. You expertly established and prepared the headquarters to serve as the Joint Task Force Headquarters and Regional Command East in Afghanistan, enabling the Afghans to take the lead in their security and setting conditions for the successful 2014 elections. The Screaming Eagles maintain a laser focus on readiness and training, revitalizing air assault operations as a division core competency. This culminated with April's exercise Golden Eagle, the first brigade level air assault exercise in more than 10 years. The 3rd Brigade Combat Team and the 101st Combat Aviation Brigade's performance was as expected exceptional and exemplified our Army's preeminent capability of air assault operations on the modern battlefield. Major General McConville and the leadership of this installation ensured the highest quality of life for soldiers and families of Fort Campbell in partnership with the Clarksville, Hopkins and Hopkinsville communities. Your strong promotion of soldier and family resiliency programs assisted the community in optimizing their performance and aided with their transition as our courageous soldiers depart our ranks. The command team of General McConville and Command Sergeant Major Alonzo Smith led this great formation and these extraordinary leaders and soldiers with a shared vision that clearly permeates this division, leaving a lasting legacy. You trained our soldiers and units to successfully accomplish every tough mission during a critical time in our nation's history. And you did so while balancing these monumental efforts with the superb care of our troopers and our families. During your tenor, the unbreakable bond between Fort Campbell and the local communities became even stronger. Through it all, Jim has been blessed with an exceptionally accomplished teammate. Maria McConville is an incredible treasure for the families in the entire Fort Campbell community. American anthropologist Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has." End of quote. Maria, you truly demonstrate this truth. Your committed service delivered meaningful progress to Fort Campbell and to the larger community. Your long hours and countless sacrifice ensured that our families received compassionate and ever-ready leadership and counsel. You've been the catalyst in establishing the Spouses Master Resiliency Trainers Pilot Program an important initiative that provides military spouses opportunities for personal growth. Your service to the Clarksville Food Initiative aided those in need amid challenging economic times. We owe you a great debt for your exceptional commitment and your selfless service. Thanks for showing our Screaming, screaming Eagle families what caring in action is all about. In short, with Jim McConville and Maria leading from the front, the 101st Airborne Division and Team Campbell did what it does best, set the standard for others to follow. You greatly impacted the lives of the soldiers and families under your care. Thanks for your unyielding commitment and leadership and for your teamwork. Debbie and I wish you all the very best as you move from here. I also want to extend a special thanks and gratitude to Brigadier General Mark and Donna Stammer for your leadership during Task Force Eagle's most recent deployment. A job exceptionally well done. As we bid farewell to Jim and Maria, we welcome a great leader back to Kentucky to lead our warriors, Major General Gary Valeski and his wife, Leanne. Gary has commanded infantry units at every level and began his Army leadership journey as a young rifle platoon leader in the 54th Infantry right here at Fort Knox, Kentucky. He arrives at Fort Campbell with a wealth of experience at the tactical, operational, and strategic levels. Most recently with his assignment as the Chief of Public Affairs for the Office of the Secretary of the Army. Gary is a proven combat leader with impeccable credentials, including frontline service in multiple tours in Iraq, and most recently as Deputy Commanding General for Combined Joint Task Force One in Regional Command East in Afghanistan. 
General Bolesky's extensive experience is timely and on target as the division prepares for the next set of vital national missions. Leanne, I know the families and friends of the 101st Airborne Division are eager to continue the momentum of world-class support for their soldiers, families, and the community with your sage counsel and compassion. To the soldiers of the 101st Airborne Division, thank you for your sustained commitment and stalwart service in defense of our nation. Like brave soldiers of past eras, you stand tall, honoring those storied division colors poised to fight the enemies of our nation. Your teamwork and professional excellence exemplify the best of our army. And screaming eagle legends far and wide echo across the ages in their esteem for your sustained vigilance and combat readiness. God bless each of you and our families for your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment to freedom. Our thoughts and prayers remain with you and our heroes serving near and far. And may God bless us as we continue to serve the United States of America. Air Assault, Freedom's Guardian, Army Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing Division Commander, Major General James C. McConville. Okay, I want all the soldiers in the field to go ahead and shake it out. Take about 10 seconds, go ahead and unlock those knees, open up those eyes. Take a look to your left and right, make sure your buddy is doing okay. I don't have a long speech, but I need to tell the cash, the medic, and the dentac that you still have a long way to go. <laughs> and I appreciate, you know, and, and those are our tenants and 160s out there and 52nd Ordnance Group, and we don't need to put you at the end of the line, but we really do appreciate you coming out here today. And although it's a little hot, it take about five more seconds and we'll go back to parade rest. Okay? And although it's a little hot here today, it could be raining, it could be lighting, it could be, it could be snowing, and it wouldn't matter because every single day when you're serving in the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell is a great day. And knowing that this is my last day in this wonderful division, and with a Pentagon assignment forthcoming, I can tell you that I will truly miss these great days at the 101st. Honorable Alberto Gonzalez, former Attorney General of the U.S., General Allen, Major General Chin, our great casas and champions of Fort Campbell, community leaders, fellow general officers, Gold Star family members, distinguished guests, Screaming Eagle soldiers, families, friends, and veterans of the 101st Airborne Division, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'd like to thank General Dan Allen, our Force Comp Commander, my West Point classmate, for his kind words, and we are proud of him and for presiding over this change of command. I really appreciate Major General K.K. Chin, the Acting Senior Commander at Fort Bragg, and my West Point classmate for also joining us today for the great job he did with us in Afghanistan. Finally, thanks to Lieutenant General Joe Anderson, our Corps Commander, who is leading troops gallantly in Afghanistan and could be with us today. There's something special about serving in the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell. And you just have to look out this parade field and see these magnificent Screaming Eagle soldiers to know why. Please join me in giving them a hand. <laughs> Division Command Sergeant Major Smith and I just returned from Normandy, where the first chapters of our division's fabled history were written. It was heartwarming to see in the many areas of Normandy, like Caraton, the French people know our history and still remember that Screaming Eagles liberated them some 70 years ago. It was humbling to see so many reenactors wearing our Screaming Eagle patch with their World War II uniforms. So many people flying 101st flags and so many kids wearing 101st gear. During our visit, we had many opportunities to see D-Day heroes. One I was most honored to meet was Jim Pee Wee Martin, who jumped in with a 506 on D-Day. Jim was called Pee Wee because he was small in stature, about 125 pounds, dripping wet. But I can tell you 
that is all that was small about him. In fact, he jumped into Normandy again this year while we were there at 93 years of age and the 101st war fighting spirit was still going strong. I saw him at very events and Jim told me three things. First, he still loved to jump and he was ready to serve if we needed him. Second, <laughs> that he was very proud of how well our present day Screaming Eagles are performing in tough places like Afghanistan and how well they are living up to the legacy that he set and his fellows set. And finally, that he liked generals that gave short speeches. So I'm going to try to comply with that guidance. You know, many of you know that we had our Vietnam veterans in here, and we recognized them for their gallantry. And during both these events, and having the opportunity to serve with many of you on this field today in combat in Afghanistan, has really put into perspective what this division has done for our nation over the last 70 years. From the drop zones of Normandy to the forests of Bastogne, to the jungles and highlands of Vietnam, to the deserts and cities of Iraq, and today in the villages and mountains of Afghanistan where striking southern soldiers are still serving and others of you will follow, Screaming Eagle soldiers have performed heroically on the battlefield whenever the nation has needed them. Writing new chapters of valor and courage and adding to the legacy of this division which began with no history and only a rendezvous with destiny. As our Vietnam vets used to say, when you want it done, ask the 101, and that remains true to this day. It's truly been an honor for me to serve in the company of you heroes. I've been blessed with great soldiers, non-commissioned officers, warrant officers and leaders, seven great DCGs, three super chiefs of staff, a fantastic staff, magnificent brigade commanders, and two outstanding command sergeant majors. And I'd like to give my personal thanks to a man who is truly one of my biggest heroes, our division command sergeant major, Alonzo J. Smith, six combat tours and combat wounded, and he continues to lead from the front. He is a national treasure. How about a hand for our sergeant major? <laughs> Serving with all of you at Fort Campbell has made all the more special by the unique relationship we hold with our neighbors here in the surrounding communities of Clarksville, Hopkinsville, and Oak Grove. I know no, of no other communities in the country that support their soldiers, families, and veterans better than you do, and we are truly thankful. We're also blessed to have an amazing civilian workforce that serves each and every day to make Fort Campbell a wonderful place to work and live, and we always know that our loved ones will be taken well care of while we're deployed. I take great satisfaction and comfort in passing the division colors to Major General Gary and Lee Ann Bolesky. Gary is a proven combat leader and warrior who I have personally observed in combat in Iraq. In the extremely volatile part of Baghdad, Sada City, Gary led his battalion heroically from the front every day in some of the toughest fighting we saw and was awarded the Silver Star for uncommon valor. Gary and Lee Ann are absolutely the right command team at the right time and I know they will take great care of our soldiers, families, civilians, and community members and add additional chapters of valor to this great division. In closing, I'd like to thank my wife, Maria, for being a wonderful mother of three great children, a super wife, and most of all, for just being Maria. I couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. And someday, when I'm sitting around with my grandchildren, and again, Jessica, there's no rush for that, <laughs> and they asked me what I did after our country was attacked in 9-11 and what I did during the war, I will pop out my chest and proudly tell them that I served with the 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault in Afghanistan, and that I served with each and every one of you, and it was a true pleasure and honor, and I and Maria will cherish the memories of our time together forever. God bless our soldiers who have given all our Gold Star family members and each and every one of you and our Scream Eagles serving in harm's way. Air Assault, we remain Army Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault and Fort Campbell, Major General Gary J. Valesky. Honorable Gonzalez, General Allen, Major General Chen, Gold Star family members, our civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army and Champions of Fort Campbell, other distinguished guests, 
veterans of the 101st, general officers, family, friends, and most importantly, to the soldiers on the field and the units they represent. I can honestly say Leanne and I have won the lottery. Not only do we get to serve with the magnificent soldiers in the only air assault division in the entire world, but we get to work alongside the best community teammates anywhere. It's clearly Christmas in July for the Valeskis. I want to thank all of my family and friends for being here today. They came across the entire United States and Canada, and this ceremony, ceremony is more special because they're here. I would also like to thank the parachute team, the color guard, and the band for all they do in making these ceremonies special and by displaying the professionalism that makes this division so great. Leanne and I are lucky to be able to follow one of the best command teams we've had the pleasure of knowing over the past 10 years. For me, it seems like yesterday when I was a battalion commander in Sauter City and had the opportunity to work with General McConville and his unit for the first time. I'll never forget contacting the pilots of the Kiowa Warriors that were shooting rockets along our route of advance during a difficult fight. I can still hear General McConville's Boston accent over the radio saying, Gary, it's okay. <laughs> He was overhead in one of the aircraft supporting our operation, the same place he always was, with his soldiers where it mattered most, sharing in the danger and the hardships they all faced. Sir, it's been an honor serving with you. Thank you for your friendship, mentorship, and counsel over the past years, and especially during our transition this week. You and Maria have done so much here for the families, the soldiers, and the communities. I can't thank you enough. Leanne and I want to wish you both the best of luck as you go back to D.C. I'm sorry. It's better you than me. And take over the reins of the, the clearly the easiest job, the G1 of our Army. As we all know, the position I assume today comes with great responsibility. To the soldiers on the field and our teammates in the stands, I want you to know I'll give you 110% every day, and I know you'll do the same. Together, we will build on the phenomenal reputation of our division. Our next rendezvous with destiny waits. As a great mentor of mine once said, you're only as good as your next operation. And I look forward to preparing and writing the next chapter of history of this great division with each and every one of you. I want to thank you again for joining us today. Please keep our soldiers that are deployed and safeguarding our freedom in your thoughts and prayers. God bless you. God bless America. Air Assault, Army Strong. Detachment.
Day Combat Team Flash Dome, which is commanded by Colonel Robert C. Campbell from Temple, Massachusetts, and Command Sergeant Major William Polo. The second battalion, 3.7 MQ Regiment, no slack, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Hospital from Linwood, Washington, and Command Sergeant Major Robert Jones from Flushing, New York. First Battalion, 506 MQ Regiment, Red Curry, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel David Walters from Henley Park, Illinois, and Command Sergeant Major Shane Ford from Fort Worth, Texas. Hey!
Brigade Combat Team Strike. Team Campbell Strike is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Neil Snyder from Tallahassee, Florida, and Command Sergeant Major Glenn Wow from Neptune, New Jersey.
and Command Sergeant Major Robert McConnell from Cabo Valley, California.
Regiment, No Mercy, the world's most lethal attack helicopter. Their mission is to provide the division with a quick reaction force, close combat attack, armor reconnaissance and surveillance, route security, and lethal detect direct fire deep behind enemy lines. Shadow of the Eagle, the Chinook's primary mission is movement of artillery, ammunition, personnel, equipment, supplies, and fuel around the battlefield. The ability of this helicopter to lift over 10 times makes it the strongest air mobile asset for the 101st Air One Division to ever saw.
We thank you for attending. Are you ready to get